Isang siyensiyang araw sa inyong lahat. Welcome sa mas pinatatag na Siyensikat, Pinoy Popular Science para sa lahat. Ako ang inyong lingkod, Dr. Renato Yuseludon Jr., kalihim ng kagawaran ng agham at teknolohiya o DOST. Sa programang ito, sasagutin natin ang anumang katanungan o kahilingan ng isang individual o grupo na may kinalaman sa science. Sa episode na ito, Susubuking ibahagi ng ating balik scientist ang kanyang mga kaalaman upang solusyonan ang sistema ng mobilisasyon sa Kalakhang Maynila at iba pang lungsod sa bansa. Ang lahat ng iyan ay dito lamang sa Siyensika. Sa ng pagpapahalaga sa sistema ng trapiko, ano nga ba ang mas mahalagang bigyang pansin? Ang mga sasakyan, ang mga tao, ang infrastruktura o ang teknolohiya? Yan ang bibigyan natin ng pansin sa pagpapatuloy ng Sensikat. Philippines has like one of the worst problems in uh, mobility in the world. Why a footbridge is not for people who actually walk. A footbridge, for example, is a solution to make, make car traffic go faster. Our traffic congestion problem is a perennial problem that, I, that, that we've had for decades already, if not just years. The traffic problem, specifically in Metro Manila, is costing us 3.5 billion pesos daily. Kung paano aakapi ng bawat LGU ang teknolohiya upang posibleng makatulong na maibsan ang lagay ng trapiko sa ating bansa, yan ang ating tututukan. My name is Robert Anthony C. I'm the head of Pasig Transport. And I'm looking for solutions to help cities improve transportation and mobility. So as you know, Cyrus, in Pasig, uh, data collection is always a challenge for transportation. Uh, could you uh, tell me a little bit about uh, how your technology can help augment a lot of the techniques LGUs use for data collection? So in LGUs, uh, as I've experienced, uh, working with them, and many things are still done manually, right? W one thing Mobility Vision Plus will do, or is already uh, doing right now with some of our uh, first trials, is it's going to make it much easier to collect data, in, uh, uh, like at, at a first step, uh, using, utilizing the community that we have who are supporting us in uh, planning. So we have participatory uh, planning. Um, and we're going to do that much faster than what we normally do with manual counts on the streets by uh, using footage, uh, videos from cell phones. That, that's what makes it super flexible, right? Like, uh, even, there are some more cur like current methods that they use out there use, utilizing CCTVs, but it's not as, as flexible as just using your phone. Like, literally, our phones are so great right now that we can, we can already capture what we need, essentially, for uh, transport planning. So that's one part, right? Like the part where we collect data and we can do it at a much faster rate because everyone has access to a phone. And w once we collect that data, uh, we have automated analytics. We essentially map out what are the statis statistics in different parts of the city, uh, what is our modal share on a certain street. And we do it from like super local level, right? Like uh, from one local street in Pasig, uh, we can figure out whether on that street we have I don't know, 50% of tricycles uh, traversing through that? Because it has implications, those things. 
and those once we understand what are the shares in, on these streets and then we compare them uh, automatically with the current infrastructure condition there we can also help you with uh, decisions uh, consider when you recommend infrastructure policies in uh, for urban mobility planning matibay na batayan o datos yan ang kakampi ng ating mga siyentista upang makabuo ng mga solusyon sa napakaraming suliranin katulad ng pamamahala o sistema ng trapiko. One fundamental aspect of the technology that I'm deploying to cities is that to provide hard evidence, hard facts of what actually works. So for example, if we take an, an example here on this road, uh, it's a high traffic road, uh, but during peak hours, there are a lot of cyclists going through here. But as we can see, there is no bike lanes available here. So one re uh, recommendation once we start collecting those evidences that we have a lot of cyclists going through here, uh, but uh, there's also a lot of traffic, it's a safety risk, right? So the technology we're deploying is going to automate that and send an alert to, to, to cities of what they should do to improve the mobility so situation on a certain road. sa anatomiya ng mobilidad. Saan nga ba nagsisimula at nagtatapos ang saysay ng teknolohiya sa pamamahala ng tao? Lahat ng yan sa Siyansikat. The, the key function in a city that they always focus on as a backbone of the economy is always the transportation system. What are the technological maybe edge uh, of the things that you're proposing for the city that would really help us uh, in the short and long term improve? So uh, some aspects of it that will de definitely immediately help uh, Tagig is first w we're going to engage our citizens, right? We're going to engage our inhabitants in Tagig Tagigenos to help us with like creating the baseline da data that we need F uh, through like images. When we ask people to collect data for us, we can baseline the perception of people, their sentiment towards the existing infrastructure that we have in Tagig, and using video data, there we can capture what is actually happening on the streets, right? And then when we bring those two together, we'll see where are the gaps, where, uh, where we're doing good, where Tagig is actually doing good, and where Tagig could improve even more. This technology does is that it really cuts so much time and effort, right? Like from traditional planning, usually such things would take years. The goal really is once we have that baseline uh, to make it easier for you to do even localized planning, right? Not just like uh, a whole master plan, uh, doing it top down, but with this bottom up approach. It's also that the communities and the people we have on ground would also appreciate those changes. They will also see those changes once they're engaged in the platform. Another thing with uh, having continuous walk paths is that to avoid, ob we have to avoid obstructions. Because uh, if we have these little obstructions, like every 20, 30 meters, it multiplies. The Philippines lags many neighboring countries in infrastructure development and traffic congestion among many other transport issues. But thanks to science and technology, local scientists and engineers are coming up with innovative solutions to improve our mobility. Joining us now is Mobility Vision Plus CEO Cyrus Gumari. Engineer, taking a look at the transport issues uh, in Metro Manila. As, as simple as pushing for better sidewalks or better bi bike lanes, protected bike lanes, better pro public transport. We can provide evidence much faster because we have tech.
people at the end of the day, right? So this is the Mobility Vision Plus beta app where a few select users have access to. Here you can see that with a pin, you can drop um, a collection point, you can select a, a collection point on a street. Then for example, you can report a violation, for instance. And our focus here is violations that highly impact sustainable mobility. And one example is if we find illegally parked vehicles on bike lanes or sidewalks. Um, another feature of uh, the app, for the add data aspect of the app is uh, to select a report. And here you can, for instance, select your, your main advocacy to give you a sense of ownership. And so we understand where you're coming from. And you can also use, uh, you can select the your, your current location. So, and you can drop a pin for later. If you don't want to upload immediately, you can drop a pin um, when you're in the vicinity and then come back to that place and then upload uh, the videos or images that you took. On the th third layer of the app, uh, the view map section, um, for now at this beta phase, uh, you, you can already see some of the process videos where we demonstrate what you can actually, what uh, statistics you see directly in the app. And this is an example of modal share. For instance, uh, on this road, Elisco Road in uh, Basic City, we differentiate between the uh, different modes here and you can see the different modal shares um, along this street. Eventually, once we have uh, many data, we can infer what's going on. We can also have advanced statistics about what's changing, why it's changing. Um, and then eventually you can see that below we have Mobility Vision Plus recommendations uh, based on the statistics on the road and based on the infrastructure uh, reports that we get from the participants or the users, uh, we can give out recommendations of what's the next best policy measure or next best infrastructure measure that the city needs to take to improve uh, sustainable mobility in their cities. All of us uh, commute, right? All of us go to places, all of us have to get to a place, do a certain activity. We always uh, think that the only transportation problem we have just stems from it. But the thing is, everything stems from the origin where pers the person starts traveling, actually. From where the people are coming and where they're going, we need to understand that we need to be able to provide se seamless travel. Uh, in Kwasay uh, MRT Avenue here in, in the city, we noticed that there are a lot of motorcycles passing by and mo uh, bicycles maybe clashing together. So are those the issues that you wish to identify and also at least partly recommend to the city certain solution? Definitely uh, it goes towards that direction. Um, uh, for instance, if we have data collected all over the city, uh, sometimes it can be difficult to figure out what I should do first. The, what the system does is we funnel that through a channel uh, where we, we're able to see what's important based on what people want and based on the principles of sustainable mobility planning. For instance, if we have so many crashes on that area, definitely that's something we want to, to do first, right? We don't really want to prioritize a very busy street where everything is actually working, although it's busy. Uh, we have to prioritize areas where it really benefits people. Uh, so the value that people get, not just the city, but the people, like people who are traversing through that route, feel that benefit uh, firsthand. What I'm trying to change here is there is a cultural shift that I can potentially push for where we're pushing from uh, car-centric to more people-centric infrastructure. Another as aspect that we're really differentiating the solution that I'm building to, to other solutions is that like uh, pre current solutions or solutions that have existed for uh, like the last five de decades, 
they've heavily relied on just capturing a survey of a, a sample of the population in comparison to how we do it before we take a, f a few people and then they collect data and then we you know expand that data and we say okay this represents the population uh, which is fine uh, I think in many places where we don't have the capacity to actually collect many, a lot of data that's a good uh, that's a good approach and we should still continue doing that but one thing we're moving a step forward we're progressing here is that when we collect data uh, from our crowd um, it's w one to one like uh, whatever we collect that's a the actual data that's what is actually going on in the ground we don't necessarily need the sample we can directly ask our uh, the citizens like hey if there's a problem in your neighborhood tell us and then uh, we'll we'll figure out a solution you're using ai to have a data driven uh, decision support system for 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 the city and through mobility vision plus how we're trying to solve mobility is using mobile people uh, with people going around the crowd capturing data for us that we normally do not capture, actually, right? To uplift the life of uh, Filipinos, where we ensure that uh, cyclists and pedestrians have priority and public transport is at the core of our transportation system. To make sure we get rid of this gridlock and we have a productive society and a productive economy. The best solutions only come when we start cooperating with each other. Nakakatuwang isipin na sa gitna ng lahat, tao ang simula at dulo ng teknolohiya at ang pinakamalakas na puwersa upang maging epektibo ang solusyon sa sistema ng trapiko. Well, calling on our decision makers, the Metro Manila LGUs, is it the right move? But at the end of the day, all of these solutions, these technical solutions, these societal solutions, they will only bear fruits if uh, we're able to convince our decision makers to make the right decisions provide them evidence using science and technology that this is the direction we should take. So this is really our way to progress as a city and we really believe that you know, this will help us, uh, I guess, provide a better quality of life for all Tagigenos. It really makes a lot of sense to give people the tools they need to be able to collect the data and help get involved in the political and decision-making process that it can give them a better transportation system. I'm sure that even our decision makers will be convinced. And with that, once we can convince them, the entire society will start, start believing that the solution to our traffic problems is really sustainable mobility solution, which is focused on people first. Ang mga batas, ang mga pulisiya, ang mga suliranin, ang mga teknolohiya ay walang mararating kung walang mga tao. Ako ang inyong co-host, Diego Reyes, at ito ang Siyensikat. Science for the People. Isang makabuluhang hangarin ang natunghayan natin dito sa Siyensikat. Patunay ito na ang mahalagang impormasyon at pananaliksik ay malaki ang maitutulong sa pagbalangkas ng mga alituntunin at pulisiya patungo sa isang higit na progresibong pamayanan. Kung ikaw ay may katanungan na sa tingin mo ay siyensya, ang makasasagot, huwag ka nang magtubiling gumawa ng vlogs at ipost ito sa iyong social media accounts at lakipan ng hashtag Siyensikat at hashtag OneDOST for You. Malay mo, ikaw na ang susunod na wisher na lalapitan ng aming DOST idols or science experts. Hanggang sa muli, ako si Secretary Renato Yuseludum Jr. mula sa DOST na nagpapasalamat sa inyong pagsubaybay 
at patuloy na suporta sa amin dito sa Sciencicat, Pinoy Popular Science para sa lahat.